Job and Family Services. Resolution number 109-19. Resolution approving a subaward agreement with Columbus Public Health to support a holistic approach to combating infant mortality across Franklin County through targeted programs, community interventions, education, and outreach strategies in the amount of $1,057,735.33. Good morning, Commissioners. Joy Bivens, Director of Franklin County Job and Family Services. Franklin County and our agency have played a critical role in Celebrate One's efforts to curb infant mortality across Central Ohio since its inception. The resolution will pull from TANF and general fund funds dollars to support initiatives designed to raise awareness as well as provide targeted, direct approach to addressing the underlying issues. And commissioners, if I could just take a few moments and kind of highlight some of the initiatives. This is kind of like a, um, I call it a Christmas tree resolution where there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of ornaments on it. So I want to highlight some of the um, initiatives that comes under this resolution before we bring Perm up. Because I think it's important as we're talking <coughs> about the poverty, the anti-poverty initiative that you all are working on and leading to educate the community on what's already being done on some of these critical issues in our community. Um, one of them is to the, um, provide crib assessments and distribution, um, ongoing Celebrate One community engagement in targeted neighborhoods like near, side, um, near East Side, Linden, Hilltop, Franklinton, Morse 161, Northeast and Southeast, and near South entrance, the um, enhanced, I'm sorry, the multimedia safe sleep campaign. You've seen those um, ads um, and um, media alerts celebrate once franklinton fuel and hilltop ymca community neighborhood initiative that is again a, another targeted initiative under this resolution the hilltop initiative will expand accepting residents from the 43222 43223 and 43204 zip codes and then we have the building health care futures um, as you all are great partners in this initiative, um, it's a community health worker initiative in partnership with the Ohio State University Nursing School, where individuals have an opportunity to go through a 12-week training program um, to obtain a health um, worker certificate through the Ohio State Nursing um, College. Um, and then there's the Southside Thrive Community Engagement to reduce infant mortality and rate and address the health indicators, the digital service integration, and also the evidence-based comprehensive health education curriculum. Again, I wanted to make sure that we highlight that those initiatives for the community so they'll know what's going on in their community. They can go to the Celebrate One website, of course, and find out more information. And today we have with us Prim from Celebrate One. And um, if you all would like for her to come up and say a few words, she is in the audience. Absolutely. Come on up, Prim. <laughs> you were ready. Good morning, commissioners. You can push that down. <laughs> Just to my height, right? Good morning. Absolutely. <laughs> my name is Pram Choksi, and I serve as Director of Community and Legislative Strategies for Celebrate One. Thank you, Director Bivens, for highlighting that, and also County Commissioners. We cannot make the impact we are in our neighborhoods throughout the county without your support. So I thank you for that. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, you did an excellent job outlining some of the initiatives that will be funded through this grant. What I found is that the holistic approach we take and working with you, this holistic approach is the only way we're going to make an impact that we need to make. And I love that we've added the community health worker piece because when we have family members sometimes saying one thing about how kids, babies need to be mm -hmm. treated, it's really hard to fight that, you know, through generational changes in how we've treated how babies should sleep, how babies should be treated in general, I think that trusted community health worker piece is going to be critically important, but you can't, we can't say it enough how we need to use evidence-based information. And I think the education in the schools on um, preventing teen pregnancy, I think the prenatal care, I think everything we're doing together is the only way we're going to make that critical impact over time that we need to make. So I am thrilled 
we're doing this as a holistic way of reducing Thank you. But mortality, I mean, it's just the way it needs to be, and we just need to say it over and over and over. Well, I just say it. Thank you as well. Uh, and I mean, clearly, this is uh, we're focused on our most vulnerable uh, citizens and families. Uh, but I guess you know because this we are in the fifth year, I think, of this I believe program. It is the fifth year, yes. And so, and I know the goal was something like 40 percent reduction, and then there's a higher disparity in the African American community and so forth. But can you give us a sense, data-wise, are we seeing improvements? Are our investments working? Um, how close are we to the goal? Excellent question. So uh, yes, we are seeing a downward trend as it relates to the overall infant mortality rate. Uh, we we have a lot of work to do as it comes to the disparity, and I think that's where Celebrate One and community partners are going to hone in on this year and beyond the next couple of years through 2020 is how can we focus on this reducing the disparity rate, working with community partners to get this done. Um, a lot of our data now reflects the disparity when we talk about um, sleep-related deaths, we talk about preterm births, infant mortality rate. We also show the disparity rate to show the community um, the work that we have to get done. So, but I, what I think I hear you saying is that, yeah, we're seeing improvements, but the, it, you know, the disparity, uh, particularly in the African-American community, it still exists, and we've got to zero in somewhat on that. And I think it's really a good point because in our poverty work, we're really sort of pulling out these data points where we need to rethink how we're investing, rethink what we're doing, innovations in that area. And so we'd ask you to continue to sort of stick with us in this conversation you know, it's not it's not as simply simple as um, let's continue to do what we're doing. Let's do better. You know, let's find ways. Some of those are very preventable if we can just access those families and make sure they have the information. And so, wherever we're not connecting to something that we want to think of innovatively in, in our poverty conversation. And Commissioner, if I could really could one of the things that we find when we look at data as it relates to infant mortality is when we look at mothers who are connected to WIC. The infant mortality rate for those babies um, go down because they have nutrition and, 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 and visiting, of course, to assist them. So um, we're having ongoing conversation with Erica Clark Jones. Um, we, in the previous administration with the governor's office, we were all looking to do a, um, a pilot for, um, for the WIC program on how we can immediately connect mothers who are not signed up or families mm -hmm. who are not signed up for WIC once we, as soon as we find out or they identify as um, having a baby. So I think that's gonna be an ongoing conversation. And, and Commissioner, when you look at the disparity rate among the black community or the African-American community, again, it is the highest. So if we can continue to educate and to push those services and be intentional about it, I believe collectively as a community, we're gonna see those efforts, um, the, the, you know, the, the rate becomes a little better one of, for that. One of the similar, one of the similar points when I was on the infant mortality task force, one of the similar similarities between the task force and the and the, um, the poverty uh, steering committee that we're doing now, um, we identified during the infant mortality task force um, zip codes. Mm -hmm. We also identified during the poverty task force zip codes and areas of town. Um, and so there's a very you know the, so that data, Kerwin Institute you know in both instances was able to identify. Uh, similar data and similar information and so being able to crunch that and being able to do do that work that kind of detailed work um, both times uh, has been very uh, in informational very uh, crucial to the kind of work that, that on both of these um, uh, these task force and mostly both of these uh, the background of both of these the, the, the data that, that we've been able to drive and so um, it still informs the work that that uh, celebrate one's doing and, and it's it's some of the stuff that's driving the work that, that we're doing now and so it's kind of crucial so we appreciate mm -hmm. that and keep up the good work this has been it's been a lot of hard work over five years now and, yeah. and we expect that the work that we're doing is gonna is, is gonna be you know uh, along a as we as we've been saying it's it's you know it's a, the long haul so but again, Commissioner, working with our partner, trying yeah. to come up with innovative ways yeah. and doing things differently, and I agree with wholeheartedly everything that you said. 
because even when you look at the zip codes in those neighborhoods, you know, those do those numbers have been those numbers, not just in infant mortality, but for the disparity rates sure. for 30, 40, 50 years. And that's why we have to be intentional with this poverty work and looking at innovation. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking at race and place when we make an investment um, of our resources. So. Yeah. Thank, well, you. We can. Thank you. If you do not have any questions, I would ask for approval of this resolution. So uh, move approval. If there's no further questions, move approval of resolution 109-19. Second. Moved and second in voting. Commissioner O'Grady? Yes. Commissioner Boyce? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Resolution number 109-19 has been adopted. Resolution number 110-19. Resolution authorizing.